Hello viewers, I'm SB, and this is Tactical Breach Wizards, or rather, this is a demo of a very early beta version of Tactical Breach Wizards. Pretty much everything you're going to see here is unfinished, and in fact, all of the dialogue and between mission sequences are completely placeholders that are just for this beta. Basically, what this is, is a uh, proof of concept. This is them showing us the, the basic idea of the game. And I find that basic idea very compelling. I'm super excited about this. So if you're not familiar with uh, Tactical Breach Wizards, this is the next game from Suspicious Developments, who are the developers of uh, Gunpoint and Heat Signature. Uh, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I have very strong feelings about Heat, Heat Signature. That game is absolutely brilliant. So I was really excited to get to try out an early version of this and to bring it to all of you uh, with the developer's consent, of course. So let's just swing into a new game here. Well, here we are on a non-narratively significant train. Yep, having a non-narratively significant placeholder conversation. You have to believe they'll add some choices to these. Well, they'd better. I want to know what you say if I pick all the asshole options. Well, we should probably just set up the first mission. I I've just been fired, right? Yeah, you, witch cop, real name to be determined, have just been fired. Now you're an ex-cop. Or, or a hex-cop? Yeah, we'll workshop that. Yeah, I think I'll leave you out of that workshop. Wait, who are you, anyway? Why, I'm Navy Seer, real name also to be determined. We're old friends. I show up hot on the tail of a team of covert ops wizards that just hit your precinct. And how do my colleagues feel about you storming into a police station with a magical assault weapon right after their friends got killed? Uh, not great. They're not great about it. Questioning looks, and indeed guns, are pointed my way. And I've just been fired, and we're old friends, so... So you very kindly helped me get out of there alive. So why do we need to hack all these computers? Look, suspicious developments didn't get to where they are today by carefully planning how gameplay objectives will relate to the narrative structure. Whoa, was it mostly the... Yeah, it was the Windows thing, yeah. If you're not familiar with Suspicious Development's early games, they tend to involve a lot of defenestration. A lot of people go out a lot of windows at very high speeds. Alright, so this is the basic idea of the game here. This is the, the, the simplest version of it. Right-click in front of this door to breach it. You can see it's a turn-based strategy game, uh, sort of x commy in its presentation. We move to this computer. We hack it. This guy does nothing about it because time is a tricky thing in a turn-based world. And then we employ our three bolt bursts. You can see it costs one action, which thankfully is the number of actions we have. And in the upper right, you can see it does one damage and one knockback. Fortunately, this guy's in front of that window. One knockback is exactly what we're looking for. That's satisfying every single time you get to do it. So they're going to dial it up a little bit. I, I should say, uh, this is a very short uh, preview demo thing. We're just going to play through the whole thing. Um, so they want us to move to a position where only one enemy can target us because it's important that we understand exactly how knockback works. Uh, you can see in the description up there in the upper right, if, if they hit a wall, remaining knockback is taken as damage. Each point of knockback that can't be executed because the opponent has some kind of obstruction in the way turns into a point of damage. So one knockback and one damage right here against the wall flings that guy up against the thing and knocks him unconscious. Easy. And then we can just do the same thing to this guy. And go hack our computer, because you know how we feel about hacking computers. I've already rated all these levels, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna screw up their data set by continuing to rate stuff. Alright, we also have another ability here, Reflex Foresight. You can see this is basically an Overwatch ability. Uh, it does a ton of damage, and it only costs mana if you shoot. You can see to the right of the icon here, it costs one mana and one action. This is one of the coolest things about the game as it's designed right now. If I mouse over the, uh, the portrait here, you can see in the top right, each character gains mana in a different way. The Navy Seer is all about support and getting things done, so he gets a mana back every time the team accomplishes an objective. You take out an enemy, or sorry, accomplishes a thing. Taking out an enemy or completing an objective. Uh, I think that's a super cool idea for, uh, for differentiating classes. So we're just going to do this. We know this guy has to come through that doorway, and when he does, we totally paste him. Easy. And then, of course, you know we gotta hack this laptop. You know how we feel about hacking laptops.
At the start of a level, you can use move to change your starting position. So yeah, we can just start in any of the tiles adjacent to the room. I mean, the pretty strong implication here, I think, is that they want us to start over here and breach this door. So let's give that a shot. Now these guys are tough. They have three health and one armor. Uh, and our attack, of course, only does one damage. You notice armor does not uh, affect the damage taken from being hurled into things. So we can, like, uh, we can step into this room, although apparently uh, this is not a safe place to do that. Step into this room and shoot this guy into that other guy. Do a little bit of damage to both of them. And then they're going to come at us and we're just going to have to figure that out. I mean, I have a plan, of course. Reflex Foresight seems like it would be pretty good out here in the hallway. But I'm, I'm going to admit to being a little worried about what happens after I do Reflex Foresight. You know what? Let's just try it. We're a seer. We have the power of, uh, of previewing the future and rewinding time. Let's make a little bit of use of that. I don't actually know whether the rewind feature as it exists here is going to be in the final game. But as it is right now, you can just rewind your whole turn. You can see here, I can just like do stuff and then go, ah, wait, no, no. It sure looks like this is the play. Hey, look at that. Pretty straightforward. Who would have thought? And then, of course, you know what we must do. You'd think he could just use his future sight to pretend he was going to walk over there and tell what's on the laptop without having to actually touch it. And then we got a perk. So we can learn the Time Grenade, an ability that allows the Seer to give his action to any teammate he can reasonably hit with an hourglass-shaped grenade full of magic sand, I assume it has to be hourglass shaped for the magic to work. That's not a super aerodynamic shape. You probably don't want your grenades to look like that. And the mana grenade allows him to throw a mana to people. It can be used once per turn and doesn't cost an action. That's pretty cool, but I think we're going to take the time grenade because there's nothing cooler than a time grenade. It's called, it's called a time grenade, obviously. So uh, I, I noticed I wasn't actually in that mission. Oh, yeah, it got kind of long for a tutorial, so they split you off into your own one. Oh, I get my own mission? Oh, do I get to name it? Operation Pain Slurry. No, you don't get to... N Wait, why is that your name choice? Operation C uh, Crime Slags. Are you randomly generating these? Operation Bilge, Bilge Gargler. Uh, you've gone wrong. Hey, you know the difference between you and me? Well, I know of a few more now, yeah. I like to click on people to shoot them through windows. Wait, I love to do that. No, 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 you like to right-click on people to shoot them through windows, and that is a bad and wrong thing to want and do. What? No, it draws a clean line between selection and action, elegantly limiting the, pot uh, the potential for contextual ambiguity. Well, it, it draws a clean line to your age. And what's that supposed to mean? When was the last time anyone else used right-click to confirm? It's a timeless paradigm. Yeah, it was a timeless paradigm in 1997. You're a timeless paradigm in 1997. Oof, good one, Voltaire. Well, I guess you can change it in the options menu if you really must. Yeah, I think I must. I'm not going to do that. It's a He's right, it is a timeless paradigm. I do actually have strong feelings about this, and people who watched the, um, the Phoenix Point series will know. <laughs> we'll know that I have very strong feelings about this. Um, so, knock out all the enemies. Here we have the Witch Cop. The Witch Cop is a little bit different. First of all, how does, he, how does she get mana? She only gains mana for dealing just enough damage to neutralize enemies. She is not into excessive force, which I think is a really cool mechanical identity. So we have a couple of abilities here. Obviously, we're going to breach the door, so let's just breach the door. We have Static Blast, which has two points of knockback, doesn't do any direct damage. And then Chain Bolt, which, well, you know what, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll talk about that in a second here in the next mission when we actually want to use it. But right now, let's just do the thing that we all know we want to do. Like I said, it's good every single time. There's kind of a sound at the end, uh, which, yeah, I don't want to think about what happens to him after he comes out of the window. It's just, as soon as he leaves here, he's gone from our world. We have no object permanence. So here's where we're going to want to use Chain Bolt. Chain Bolt does two damage to an enemy unit, and then we can have it bounce from there to another enemy unit. Each time we, uh, each enemy we target with it costs one mana. We can choose to fire it at fewer enemies if we want, but uh, this is a super cool ability. 
Because of the fact that uh, the game is so much about moving around and positioning, this lets you do a lot of really cool stuff. You can see the, defin the direction of knockback is determined by the direction of the bounce, not like di the direction between your cop and the target. So we can push two people out windows and one person into a wall for two points here. That's that's just super cool. What what a good thing. What a good idea the witch cop is. All right, what do we have here? Some guys and also a laptop, if you can believe it. So we really want to make sure... I guess we don't have to make sure that the chain bolt pushes this guy out the window. If it knocks him into the wall, that would be fine. So if we started over here... Well, if we started over here, we wouldn't be able to push this guy out that window, though. You know what? I think we're we're fine where we are. Because I really want to start this uh, this thing by doing that. Actually, can I... Yeah, I think this is the best version of that. It's not quite going to knock this guy out, but it'll do two damage to him, and then all we have to do is not get close enough to him for him to hit us. And we can finish him off pretty easily on the next turn if we can just, yeah, like this. If we can just find a spot where I can slam him against whatever that is over there. Got him. Although, should be noted, we wouldn't have gotten mana back for that uh, for that kill because we definitely overdid it a little bit. Okay, here we go. We have both of our people. Just survive for three turns. If by survive you mean totally defenestrate all of the enemies, then I am right there with you. That's exactly what we'll do. So, actually, how are we going to do this? I can't use Reflex Foresight very reliably here because I don't know what direction that guy is going to come at me from. I guess I can't I can't Reflex Foresight diagonally either. I was thinking he would have to step into a, 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 an orthogonally adjacent position, but that looks like it is not the case. So how are we going to deal with that dude? Well, let's start by opening the door, huh? Is it possible for you to get outside? Maybe not. Okay, we, here's what we can do. We can start by chain bolting. We can push this guy a space and then have the chain bolt bounce down to here. That'll take out that marksman. Ooh, and then you know what we can do. We can actually use our time boost to restore the witch cop's action. And just have the witch cop run in here and bounce this guy out the window with his double pushback. Or with her double pushback, rather. There we go. Easy. Survive for three turns indeed. Oh, because there's enemies. Sure. Because there's going to be more guys. I guess that makes sense. Well, this seems fairly straightforward. We're not going to be able to knock you out the window, sadly. Listen, you can't win them all. So all we have to do is not have both of our people die this turn, right? I should probably have moved the Navy Seer to a position where we could have like tried to set up an Overwatch on that guy. Although, actually, if he plans to move into that space, can I just Reflex Foresight? Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. You go up against the wall, and yeah, easy. Apparently they can't attack you from the, uh, from the diagonal. All right, here we come up against a much more insidious foe. Of course, we have some grenadiers, some basic point-and-shoot type guys. That guy's got Overwatch. But the real uh, the real centerpiece of the thing here is this one. This one holding the traffic light. This is a traffic warlock. You try unjamming the, AO the A305 spaghetti junction without resorting to dark magic, and then we'll talk about who's taking this too seriously, Mike. It's a bit of, <laughs> a bit of dialogue as a description there. I am in love with the concept of this guy. He is going to shoot traffic at us, and we're just going to have to find a way to deal with that. So, we probably want the Navy Seer. I mean, the Navy Seer can deal with either of these guys, I suppose. It doesn't really matter how we do this. They each only have two health. So the important thing is that we don't let that Grenadier live. Oh, wait, what was I? What am I thinking? It's a good thing there's a rewind button here. I only do two damage when I can actually push people into something. How about this? How about we move... I move the witch cop to here. We're going to get shot in the back. This should this should totally work, though. Right here. We'll just chain bolt Grenadier into that lab table and you into this sink. There. Easy. 
And then in both of those cases, I did. I should have done exactly enough damage. So I think we, yeah, we got all of our all of our mana back. Oops, that's. Hold on, rewind. Yeah, that's not a place where I want you to stand. What am I thinking here? That's much safer. Well, you stepped in front of the window. That's a tremendous error on your part. Uh, also, we have this big red area here. Probably best we don't stand in that. So, if I move you to here, do you have the option of... No, we can't actually hit that guy. Although, I guess it becomes less important to hit that guy because um, we are now outside of his firing range. So, we can just put you away. Sorry, once again, not really thinking through my actions. Fortunately, you can attack and then move. If we do this from this side, it totally works. And then, I don't know if you have anything that's like super exciting to do here. So, you want to get out of the traffic... But I'd love to do this in a way that lets me have line of sight to throw a chain bolt. Because obviously, we could do some work here. Uh, if I hurl this explosive against that desk, is it going to... Will that set it off? I guess one way to find out. That totally did, in fact, set it off. Okay, I think we're in a pretty good spot here. And then there, <laughs> there's your spectral traffic. Crush Hour, it's called. That's a pretty good name for a spell. Alright, so, sadly, I only have one mana now. I only have one, uh, I can only target one person with Chain Bolt. So we need to find a way to do exactly enough damage to somebody to bring them down, so that I can get some mana back. If I stand right here, is my pushback direction good? Yeah, this'll work. Alright, so that'll earn us a mana for next turn. And then you can just shut this guy down, which I guess is all you really need to do. And we'll just wait here, responsibly, for traffic to pass. You know, as you do. So as you can tell, we're going to have some problems with the uh, the enemies. We need to get a little closer. Uh, unfortunately, Static Blast, hold on. If I Static Blast this guy first, we can earn ourselves another mana. And then move. You also just need to get out of the way. Alright, that's a much more difficult spawn. Fortunately, this guy has made a smallish tactical error. I'm sure you all see it already. There we go. You go play with traffic down on the road where the traffic belongs. And then we could just I guess we're gonna we're gonna do more damage. Well, never mind. I was gonna say we're gonna do more damage with the witch cop if we have the witch cop shoot this guy than we will with the Navy Seer. But we could, of course, rely on Reflex Foresight, which is way, way more damage. There you go. That's the solution. So, easy enough to put you away, and then we can actually go for the laptop here pretty safely. I guess maybe I should have been moving forward more aggressively the whole time. Alright, and then also, this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, I just, like, conceptually, this is super good. All right, I think we're probably going to grab that mana grenade. We're really not having uh, mana problems with the Navy Seer at all. So that seems pretty good. And then with the Witch Cop, uh, Static Blast does one damage in addition to the knockback. I don't know, that's fine, I guess. What I'm thinking is that it's very often the case that we get the full damage as knockback anyway, and the enemies that are most dangerous tend to have armor. So... A little bit more mana might actually be useful for Witch Cop. So, just this one conversation scene, then. Yep, and I think that's all missions they have so far. Wow, hasn't it been like two years? Yeah, but in their defense, it took a while to decide how time worked. Huh, I guess I was taking that for granted. Many of us do. You know, I think this beta is mostly to test the waters for what kind of missions, puzzles, situations the players like, and what solutions they find before they make a lot of content blind. They're making the rest of the game blind? Is game development too easy? No, like, like flying blind, without feedback on what's been done so far. Oh, but, but I kind of feel like doing another mission. Yeah, me too. Well, shall we just get off the train here and see if they bash together some bullshit levels just to stop us falling off the edge of the world? Uh, that doesn't make any real sense as a strategy, but yes, I'm in. 
and maybe they'll throw in another character. You know, one who wouldn't normally show up this early in the game, but her mechanics basically work, so why not? Uh, you're just not even hiding your puppet strings at this point, are you? Well, after this, we should all wishlist the game and, pr and purchase previous titles on a le leading digital retail platform. And maybe hire a voice actor who can read English. So, one last set of missions here where we are introduced to the Rebel Riot Priest. A resistance fighter in stolen Riot Priest armor who gains mana from taking damage. The Riot Priest does not start with any mana and has one ability that just turns mana straight into damage, which is fairly powerful. But why would we ever use that when we could use a thing that does a huge amount of knockback? So this uh, charge does one damage and also knocks the enemy one square for every square you traveled during your charge. So obviously, we're going to breach this and then we're going to let this particular tracker 100% have it. That's so good. <laughs> That's all I want to do in a video game right there. All right, well, I think we're going to get shot a small amount here. It's fine. The Riot Priest has armor and also a point of stability, which reduces incoming knockback damage. Uh, I don't know why you would do that, but I will do what I am compelled to do. And then... Uh, we could move, but honestly, I'm not going to be able to take us anywhere that matters. We can just end our turn right here, and then we may as well give this guy a sensor slam, just so we can say we did it. Look at that. Now that is versatility of strategy right there. Alright. So with the Witch Cop and the Riot Cop, knock out all enemies, access all the laptops. Well, it seems to me like we should charge this dude right here. We'll cross the Overwatch and take a hit which is good for us in terms of mana. And I, th I think I want that mana. And then... Is there a reason for Witch Cop to do anything more complicated than just shoot this guy into the wall? I mean, we could do a, um... We could do a Chain Bolt. I guess I put myself in a position where a Chain Bolt's not super useful. Like, if I step in here... Will this knock you? Yeah, that's not really the direction I want you to get knocked in. But if I do this, then we can bounce it into this guy as well. And you know what? The Riot Priest can take one more hit. That's not a big deal. In fact, it's kind of optimal. Alright. Uh, let's actually start with the Riot Priest here. Because uh, we have a pretty obvious uh, sensor slam for a huge amount of damage. Thanks to all this mana. And then you can just... Oh, I was hoping she would fly out the window. I guess the, the wall's a little bit in the way. Okay, and now we actually have all three of us. So, survive for three turns. This is a pretty, uh, a pretty densely packed room of enemies. Fortunately, there's actually a pretty good spot for Chain Bolt. So, I think... How would we chain bolt multiple enemies to knock so as to knock them out the window? If we bounce it like this here, then uh, I don't think Polaris is actually going to go out the window, but he will at least hit the wall there. And then you. Yep, I feel pretty good about that. Just like opening the door and like setting off a force bomb in the middle of the room. It's such a cool thing. Probably all we want to do with the Witch Cop is just move back, right? I guess these enemies are not really the, uh, these enemies are not really the shoot you at the end of the turn type, but I, I certainly don't want to cross the overwatch. Yeah, you just step out of the way. You, on the other hand, can absolutely just cross the overwatch. Unfortunately, you can't do much else. I might not have started these guys in the, uh, in the most optimal positions. What is the explosive range on this thing? I actually don't know, but if we shoot it and push it next to that guy, probably it'll kill him. Or, or, or we could just shoot him, I guess. I was <laughs> I was maybe overcomplicating that slightly. Yeah, why don't we just do that? All right. Two enemies, or three enemies, rather, out the window. That seems pretty good as a start. Uh, and then the Riot Priest. You know, we haven't talked about the swap ability at all. The Riot Priest does have the ability to just swap positions with an enemy. I don't know that that's super helpful here. I guess if I run in here, take a point of damage, because it's fun to take a damage, and then swap with you, I'm at least not going to get meleeed by the Enforcer. Okay, that's quite a few enemies. 
Uh, so we have a pretty good Riot Priest charge. I was kind of thinking that that was going to set that off. Witch Cop needs a little bit more mana, unfortunately. Hmm, how do we want to handle this? The Riot Priest can absolutely absorb this little bit of fire. It would probably be best if we took down Marksman Plaza here with the uh, with the Seer. Just to, uh, I'm going to have to move into the room to do that, apparently. Can I do it from here? No. Line of Sight is a little unclear to me. I do wish that there was like um, like an XCOM 2 style previs of what you'll be able to see from your new tile. This should do it. All right, and then that will allow this to happen. Okay, I have a little bit of mana. We're going to take some damage here, and uh, the Rebel Riot Priest definitely needs to stop getting hit. But I think we're in a, we're in a pretty okay position. So, maybe I spoke too soon. Look, I'm looking at this, and it's actually kind of ugly. So we can do three damage with our Sensor Slam, which doesn't actually bring down a full health enforcer. Obviously, it's not too hard to deal with you, but the three enforcers is a, is a real problem. We don't really have that many explosives. And the explosives we do have are not in super useful positions. Uh, if we do a chain bolt, bring you down and also smash this against the wall, will that cause it to explode? Yeah, it didn't do as much damage as I would have liked, but... It did something. I wonder then, if we throw a time boost grenade, we have you run to here. When we do two points of knockback to an enemy, does it also do two points of damage to a thing they're pressed into as well as to them? No, it does not. In fact, a point of <laughs> the knockback transferred through to the navies here. That's really not what I was going for. Well, you know. It doesn't say everybody had to survive the three turns. Yeah, we made it. Hey, technically a victory, which is the best kind of victory. All right, knock out all the enemies. We have here a traffic warlock. We have a red enemy spawning door. It's on the outside of the building, but you know, magic. Also, a billboard for brand. Hey, who doesn't love brands? All right, let's see if we can't get through this. So are these people in the right positions? Are these the doors we want these people to breach? We might have an easier time if the witch cop was over here. Hold on, I'm going to just temporarily swap you guys. Just thinking, you know, pushing enemies out windows and stuff. So the riot priest is going to have a pretty tricky... Yeah, I'm not really sure how we do this. We can do the most damage to the enforcers by... Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to swap the riot priest over to that door. Can I just... No, they do not swap cleanly. Okay, that's fine. So we can do this. I assume we can't static blast that guy without moving inside. Oh wait, that's probably... I don't want to move to a place where I could be charged by both the enemies. So we static blast you once. And then we have the Navy Seer just um, time grenade and go for another static blast. And then the Riot Priest can at least start working on this guy with a charge. That's right, it doesn't actually do any initial damage. That's fine. Uh, so you... You know, instead of, um, instead of spending the time boost... Well, the time boost doesn't cost any mana. I guess there's no reason not to do it this way. Yeah, we'll just run you inside, have you time boost the Witch Cop... And sadly, the Witch Cop uh, does not get exact damage here, so we don't get any mana. I kind of I thought when we expanded our max mana, it would also cause us to start the mission with five five mana. Not actually how it works in practice, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, well, you are easy enough to bring down. So let's see here. It's probably a charge into a position where that guy can get windowed. 
And then we have a nice, easy, uh, a nice, easy, exact drop for the witch cop to get that mana filled up. That's a very good slammed up a w against a wall animation, too. I think I'm just going to push you out the window, too, and it might be time for us to press forward here. Now, unfortunately... Hmm, should we wait another turn? I don't really want to just let enemies spawn out of here infinitely. But we have the enemies lined up in a way that I think will be really useful for the Witch Cop. So let's chain bolt you into that guy. Then into this guy, then into that guy. We could do it again, and I guess we probably should. Because that is going to do... Oh no, it didn't do one damage. Because it was only one point of knockback, because this guy has stability. Oops. Well, I mean, it's still, a, it's still a good thing to do. It still took out multiple enemies. Ow, that's a very serious attack there. Uh, I may have goofed. It's possible that I goofed. Uh, well, let's, um, hmm. Here. Let's step you over to here. To reflex foresight, or do we actually have a... Can we deal with you? Kind of no, actually. I could step to here... And then do a charge, and that would probably stop you from being able to shoot at least. But obviously, the downside of that is the Riot Priest gets hit by a car. I don't actually know how much damage Crush Hour deals. I would assume it's enough. But we also don't have a way of doing anything about it. Because you have very limited movement. So, I guess this is what we're going to do. We're going to move to here and charge you to break your line of sight. Oh, wait, no, I totally do have a, a move that fixes this problem. I can swap places with people. So let's do that. And then that means we should do something else with you. You should, you should try to survive. If my Riot Priest is here, their Riot Priest is probably not going to move into this column. But I think I'm going to try that anyway. Let's, let's see if we get lucky. And you just need to move to somewhere else in this room. Doesn't really matter where. Okay, let's hope that this guy walks into the uh, into the Overwatch. Oh right, the car. I kind of forgot about causing the enemies to hit each other with cars. Also, that doesn't really do that much damage. It looks like because enemy Riot Priest Rubicon is fine. Although their traffic warlock has now crossed him, and you know what they say about doing that. Uh, so. If we step over to the side, can I shoot you through the wall from here? No, I cannot. Obviously, we can deal with Tracker Schneid pretty easily. Uh, the Riot Priest has to figure out how we're going to deal with this guy, though. Swap has... wow, Swap has no cost except for the action. That's... that seems very powerful. Well, I could just step to the side. My concern is that if I just step to the side... We're probably going to be letting the Traffic Warlock just use that ability over and over again. So I'm going to swap with you. I don't think we're in a tremendous amount of danger over here. So I'm just going to do the burst into the wall. Uh, knock out all the enemies missions are somewhat complicated when it seems like there's maybe an infinite number of spawns. Enemies coming in from other precincts, I suppose. Uh, but it's fine. This Riot Priest, did his brain break? He got hit by that car, and it seems like maybe he forgot how to, like, move and do stuff. Well, we can start working on the, uh, the Traffic Warlock now. And that gives me some options over here. Again, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen if I step closer to this guy. I'm a little worried he's going to wake from his reverie. I'm pretty sure him being asleep is a, is a bug. So who knows what might jostle him out of it. I guess we'll find out. Nope, I, th I think we've encountered a bug. Well, I'll make sure to note that on the feedback form. No, he woke up. Okay, everything's fine. Well, when I say everything's fine, obviously I don't mean, like, fine. This traffic warlock having two points of armor is a real bummer, man. You need to not be so vulnerable. And I assume I'm not allowed to reflex foresight, yeah, directly at an enemy. Okay, well, we can create a, a safe spot in this column by swapping positions with the Traffic Warlock. 
that would also make me safe from the tracker. I really just need to do four damage to this guy, right? That's that's what this has to be. We have to figure out how how we make that happen. The other thing I could do is I could try to have the riot priest come back and swap on you. Like what if I what if I instead of doing the thing I'm talking about here, ran over there, swapped you into the traffic beam, and then We don't get a prediction on what this guy's movement is going to look like. But if I just did this, let's see what would happen. Okay, the traffic does what we need the traffic to do. Okay, and enemy Riot Priest Rubicon refuses to move on account of huge cowardice. Well, this is pretty bad. Uh, the situation's gotten a little bit dire without our friend the Witch Cop. Uh, we have lots of ways of dealing with Tracker Black Soil. I guess if we start by dealing with Tracker Black Soil, it's not actually that easy to do, it looks like. And we cannot move further away from the uh, the room. Okay, hold on. Can I... How much of a line of sight do I need to do the swap? This swap's pretty good, right? I wonder if... The tracker is actually going to take that shot because I just like teleported out of there. I'm going to try bursting you back toward the window. Oh, right, stability. Shoot, that doesn't that doesn't do anything. Well, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to just stay right here and wait for you, or maybe cause you to get hit by a car over and over again. And yes, in fact, that did cause the tracker to shoot uh, shoot the friendly. That's super useful. You know what's uh, not great is everything else that's happening here. Um. Well, I sure wish that our seer could do damage to, to enemies that have armor. That would be really useful. Uh, can we see... Yeah, there we go. Oh, the swap doesn't work that way. If you, if you swap in such a way that you're still in their line of sight, they still shoot you. Well, that being the case, we probably want to do this a little bit differently. You know what? We might want to just restart this scenario and get our uh, get our witch cop back. This might be a lot easier to do with the witch cop. I think if I step here, the riot priest is going to be able to hit me, but maybe... Ooh. That complicates things a little bit. Yeah, you know what? Let's just uh, let's give this one another go here. This time without me sacrificing the witch cop foolishly. Uh, so... I do think we want the Navy Seer on this door, though. We're going to try something a little bit different this time. So the Navy Seer breaches and shoots this guy in front of the window. How about that? And then we have the Riot Priest. Hold on, I'm going to swap these two as well. Because I want the Riot Priest to come through the, the door here in a place where we have a, a really long charge distance available to us. This feels like a much cleaner open. Although maybe I should have ordered that differently. I was going to try to push you through the window. I'm concerned that the... Oh no, okay, I can, I can just shoot the bolt straight through my other guy. There we go. That seems like a much better start, doesn't it? Look at how clean that is. I don't even think we have to hack this laptop, but I'm going to. Apparently hacking the laptop was uh, was worth some mana. So how do we want to deal with the Traffic Warlock? I'm not even really that worried about the Traffic Warlock. It's the Riot Priest that has me scared. Alright, well you may as well come in here and just put that guy out the window. The way they're lined up right now, we can definitely do some pretty serious damage with the Chain Bolt. It's not quite as good as it was before, I think, but like... It's pretty easy to put you into that wall. Ah, but if I do that, hold on a second. If I put you into the wall, I don't get to go to the Riot Priest. Ah, that's a real shame. So we can't get rid of that guy this turn, huh? Well, this is fine. The most important thing is getting this room open. And then we'll just have you move next to the door. Wow, I'm surprised that... 
Okay, maybe we'll just maybe we'll just try that one more time. That's exactly the same way I lost the riot, uh, the witch cop the first time too, isn't it? <laughs> I'm fairly sure. All right, you move to here. You move to here. Doing this in kind of a clumsy fashion. There we go. That's what that's supposed to look like. We're just gonna do a, we're just gonna do a good job. And I know you're all saying at this point, SB, what reason do I have to think that you are even capable of doing a good job? You're not wrong. You, you, you bring up a salient point here. It doesn't actually matter which way we order this. This uh, this play works out with the Riot Priest going last as well. Okay. And again, just because it feels good to use the laptop. Using the laptop does actually refill the mana to full, which I'm not even 100% sure why that's the case, but... What a good thing. What a good, wonderful thing. I should probably be aggressively feeding mana to the Riot Priest, right? Let's see. The Riot Priest has a pretty easy open here with the charge. And then maybe we want to do... Nothing else? I'm just thinking, like, I want to make sure that we can go through the window with... Or go through the door with everybody prepped. If this spawns an enemy no matter what, though, we're always going to be one person short. Yeah, I guess this this is this moment is actually just as good as any other moment. Except that it's a little bit better than some moments because this puts the Riot Priest in, in harm's way instead of anybody else. Uh, and we'll just, we'll just do this. We'll stop trying to get fancy with the Chain Bolt. Oh, we did trigger the uh, Marksman Fury's Overwatch, but unfortunately... The Traffic Warlock is too tough for it to have actually accomplished anything. And then we'll just commit real deep here, and you may as well do... You're not actually going to do any damage. Oh, no, that's right, sorry. The armor the armor won't reduce the knockback. We can, we can get one point of damage up on this nerd. Okay, that is a much better outcome than the thing that has been happening. And then... We just stand here. I can push you back into the wall. You can very easily take care of Tracker Stone, and all you have to do is get out of the way, actually. You have three mana right now, so I guess the Sensor Slam is useful. And then, yeah, step out of the way. Okay, I do wish that that did a little bit more damage, because it would be nice to be able to use the Traffic Warlock against the Riot Priest. Uh, you can... We could come up here and try to get a cool chain bolt off. But I think probably the smart move is just to get rid of the riot priest. We've been we've been offered an opportunity here. Two pushback is exactly enough damage. Uh and then the riot priest is going to need to step through here. It doesn't make sense to do any kind of swapping or anything cuz we're just going to have the navy seer um, deal with the tracker. Okay, I think that's a pretty good turn. I'm much happier with this version of events. So we probably just do a swap, right? It's easy enough to deal with this guy, although apparently I'm going to have to move before I have the vision necessary. Can I... I really do want to just push him diagonally into a thing here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and so now we can very easily get ourselves down to just the three of us versus the Traffic Warlock and one reinforcement each turn. And if we can't figure out a way to get the kill on uh, after this, then we probably don't even deserve it. Look, I figured it out. I did it. What a hero. See, we get there eventually. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of foresight. And also, the power to rewind time. Is it possible this train isn't actually moving? Well, it isn't now, because that's the end of the beta. Oh. So, for us, is that like having the rest of the day off, or the end of the known universe? Yeah, I just, I just want to put it in my planner. Well, there's a level editor. Oh, I don't have a relatable analogy for that. Well, it's like if you could reshape our world and everyone in it, but all you chose to make was room-scale gunfights with wizards. Oh, so it's like being five. Well, it's like being five with Steam Workshop support, yes. Wow, it has Steam Workshop support already? 
That seems like an overreaction to the time that people made a uh, petition to add that to Gunpoint, even though it had already been announced for Gunpoint. Yeah, either that or a desperate ploy for level design inspiration from someone who spends the entirety of the content production phase feeling like each idea is the last one he'll ever have. Oh, yeah, it could be that. Could be that. And that's it. That's that's what exists now in the uh, in the beta. There actually is workshop support. We could take a quick look at the... I'm going to have to like tab out and download some missions. And you know what? This is maybe a fine place to end it here. That is the basic idea of what Tactical Breach Wizards will someday be. I am super excited about it. And by the way, if this is your first time hearing of suspicious developments and you like the idea of a game where you knock people out windows, I really can't recommend Heat Signature enough. It's totally awesome. If you need a little bit more of a sell, there are some videos of it right here on this very channel. Uh, there may be a link to them in the description below. Uh, come back next time for some more new stuff, and we'll see you then.